I've been covering um lately, deception. Cause I I don't want to get off topic, but like I um was I'm really tackling that whole Trump profit thing, you know, with all the false Trump profits. And I was actually involved in that, you know, to yeah. a, 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 a degree, you know. So that's a, a, a heavy topic because like even if if you look at at that, there's people that would argue you down claiming that. Well, Donald Trump, he coming back in um in um April. Okay, wait till till August. Right, okay, right. now 2022, a lady just messaged me on YouTube talking about Trump did some type of sting operation against the cabal and he'll be back yeah. this year. And I just kind of was explaining, well, you know, like if this didn't happen and this didn't happen, like why do you think that? But a a, a deceived person don't know that they're deceived. That's why it's right. deception. Yeah. I mean, so that's the, is this what it looks like when humans are trying to understand a God as deceived beings, denominations and uh, doctrine changes and, you know, accusations of heresy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, schism. You've brought this up a couple times, but it's worth noting. Um, a lot of the reformed doctrines, that we grew up believing, you know, as a, um, I've always just said, I am a Christian in protest of the institutional church. That's how I've identified myself. But if I had to go to a church where I did it by checking off the doctrines I most align with, I'd end up in a reformed church. Um, I, I do know that about myself, but that doesn't mean I think they're all right. And, you know, a lot of the doctrines in the reform movement are less than 200 years old. Yeah. When, 1,800 years of church history before that, and it's a global religion, like you said. This is something I'm just now kind of uh, unpacking, too, over the last year, is this idea that there's nothing Western or American about Christianity. So, like the Trump prophecies and stuff like that, there's definitely a rise in our country of, like, Christian nationalism, right, uh, which... Yeah which does stuff like that, like a Trump prophecy or, you know, God's will happen. You know, you. It's not know. the first time. It's, it's just a repeat of other things that have happened throughout history. Yeah, exactly. Like people being exalted above measure. And it's like, and, and, I, I, and I'll use that again, the Trump prophecy, because it, it's like it created its own branch of Christianity, the, uh, the, the Christian national church. Yeah. And it seems to, um, there's two things that it's taught me. One, it seems to be funneling probably really well-intentioned white people into just wanting to have some sense of shared heritage and values. And it's taught me that black people aren't a monolith. I, I, I would admit that I was probably a little ignorant to that before, maybe five years ago, six years ago. But one thing I've learned in the recent past there's no difference between black and white people that you, you will find black people that believe everything across the board, just like you will find white people that believe everything across the board. Yeah. There's not one view, you know? Yeah, I do know. I was, I was, I was on team Trump. You know, I like some of the things that he's done. I mean, it, in the, in the context of having to pick, cause I mean, you only get two people to pick. Come on, let's be honest about it. You know, I, I alien dialectic, right? Exactly. You only get two. So it's certain things I like that he did that, you know, with taxes and, and stuff, you know? But like you were saying, it's just, it's like, it's so strange because like when, when I was over there with, you know, the charismatic groups, like that was following like Greg Locke and all them guys, it's, it's like they teach you to not think like critical thinking. Don't, don't use that logic. Get rid of that. I was told personally um, oh, this is this is gonna be good. I was told personally for years that sense, like get rid of common sense. We walk by faith, but what is faith? <laughs> I, I disagree uh, with that perspective that is said by many that faith is different somehow than critical thinking and reading and uh, building your worldview based on facts. Uh, that's not what faith has been to me. Faith was a gift from God. Uh, my eyes were opened spiritually. My eyes were opened to the realities of the world. My eyes were opened to evil and how it works. 
I was walking blind before. That has been faith to me. The idea that I'm purposely casting aside facts and common sense and that's faith, that's a mis misidentification of it, you know? I do know, but it's like, it goes back to in, inerrancy. I just think a lot of the churches reformed, you know, what, whatever. It's like they have to diminish the, the, the laity's ability to think. And yeah. a lot of times it comes from, you may love your, your pastor. So when he get out there, he may speak loud and speak bold and speak authoritatively. And as humans, we tend to believe we are like followers, generally speaking. Yeah. You know, we were designed to follow. So, yeah. And I'll, I'll admit in this, I am a hypocrite. I am a hypocrite because I am totally opposed to what I did, which was going to one of these online schools, Bible colleges, getting a degree. What started my whole journey on this was not going to school. It was the day they gave me a piece of paper and said, yep, you're qualified now to go care for people's souls. And I didn't know anything. I didn't wow. know anything. Um, it scared me that I graduated with a 4.0. That's not supposed to happen. You know, that that's not, you want to call them, I, I don't believe they're all paper mills, you know, where you buy yeah. a degree. And I do think it's the condition of the mind and heart. I worked hard. I did study. I took it extremely seriously, but I graduated with no foundation. I was not prepared. And I think a lot of pastors fall into that and they mean well and they want to answer every question. So they won't say, like you said, they won't say, I don't know. And the next thing you know, you've got micro deceptions everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, because you you are absolutely right. Like, because because you went to school, people would automatically esteem you as, you know, a person of knowledge, a person yeah. of, of truth. Because I did it, you know, like look at in the re reform movement, all those doctors, doctors, doctors. I mean, just set aside the big ones. Just it's a lot of doctors, doctors that you don't see. But if you were to like line them all up, I, I bet a lot of them not as knowledgeable as we would think. They just maybe was just good at school. Some people just good at school. Yeah. And now they're doctors and the people in charge, they can't do it all by themselves. Right. So now you got Dr. So-and-so leading, a, I don't know, 500 member church, but he doesn't have a strong foundation in the things of the Lord. And then I know that generally, oh, overall, I, I, I don't think that Christian history is taught. It's like Christianity started with Martin Luther and then it just right. went oh, forward. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and in our communities, like the Reformed communities, Baptist communities, mm -hmm. I'd even argue it starts in the 1800s. I mean, the dispensational interpretation of prophecy, um, uh, rapture, um, the, the interpretations of them, I mean. Tongues, you know? tongues, which we don't um, know. Yeah. Yeah, people don't know. It's a, um, like that whole big um, tent revival tongue shouting movement. That was late 1800s. Yeah. I can't, I can't think of the guy's name. It ain't Kearney. It's, I can't think of his name right now. I can't either, but I know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. So would you agree it was probably most popularized maybe by like, um, people might know of like Billy Graham or uh, even before John G. Late, like his era, John yeah, G. Late. Yeah. Matter of fact, I got a book right here, right here. I know it is some, oh man, I must, I must have moved it, but it would really bless a lot of people to see it. Can you still hear me? I know I didn't uh -huh. hear my uh, Absolutely. This book talks about it. Yeah, clear, fair, um, I, I'm still reading. It's called Fair, Clear, and Terrible, The Story of Shiloh, The Strange Fragment of American History. It just oh, talks about, yeah, yeah, it talks about, about the religious cult. movement of Shiloh, right? Yeah. Yeah, like that was like a big, somewhat pseudo like charismatic movement. And it was really just a cult. Yeah. Did you say you said you grew up in the Reformed Church and at some point you were attracted to the uh, the charismatic church? Like what what did that look like? Um, I'm, glad. I'm glad that you asked. I, I didn't grow up. I didn't grow up in the Reformed Church. Uh, I, technically, I didn't grow up in church at all. Um, when I was a teenager, from time to time, I went to church. 
but that was more so more so just like little tra- traditional going through the the, the motion yeah you know, sure it, it won't it won't no real church you know yeah yeah but then when i um around the time i turned 20 that's when i i, I had just more a big heart changing experience like i really mm-hmm. wanted to know jesus something in me just click like i begin to get more oh yeah I, I remember a buddy of mine gave me a cd by a christian rapper named lecrae and yeah. it was the first time anybody ever addressed sin and i felt so convicted that i was living in sin and when i heard sin about that it just changed but check this out lecrae and his camp they were following the john MacArthur's. They were following the John Pipers. They was following the Dr. Um, James Whites. So what, what those um, men of God was teaching is what was funneled into the music, which wasn't bad. You know, it was a prick, you know, it pricked me. Yeah. So I follow suit to what they believe. I, y'all, if y'all reform, I'm reformed. You know, yeah. if y'all got a backpack full of tracks and a Johnny Mac, which is slang for a John MacArthur study Bible, I want one. I'm you fascinated know? by that. Can we yeah. stay on that for one second? Yeah. So you're, you're saying that Lecrae's music preached the gospel to you and it worked and you were converted by it. That is a really powerful thing for people to realize. At that time, yes. His his music has changed and that's no shot at, at, at Lecrae. He probably oh, sure. Cool yeah, I know the controversy. Yeah, but, it, but it has changed a lot, but but his earlier, like his first four albums, yeah, definitely. It was just so convicted because they won't condone in sin. They yeah. won't. And, and a lot of people who just, just in general, uh, I, I would say a lot of churches don't preach sin. They Could preach, we agree? Because we're kind of targeting the reform movement. Could we agree that um, the reformed movement is very good at preaching sin? I would movement. definitely say that. The reform movement is great at preaching sin. I love, let me say, I love the, the reform movement. I just, just like Martin Luther, I just got some issues with it. <laughs> I don't be- have a problem with the church. I got a problem with some things that we teach in the church.